Alliance. Thanks so much. Chen Zhao joining us now from Montreal. He's the chief global strategist at Alpine Macro. That's a global investment research firm. Uh, we have got a lot there to kind of cover. What do you think the net effect of these comments coming out of Boal will have as far as the tensions are concerned? Well, obviously, this is a very, um, very positive in terms of diffusing the, the uh, tension. As you can see, Trump has already tweeted that he thanks uh, Xi, uh, President Xi's comments, and I think he praised, he even praised that this is the right thing to do for China. I think that he is right on that. I, I think the Chinese government uh, have planned for this for a long time. And of, of course, the delivery of these reform measures are properly calibrated uh, at a time when uh, uh, Chinese government is obviously want to diffuse attention with the U.S. And I think the message is received and received reasonably well uh, by Trump. So good stuff, good yeah, thing. Good stuff. So uh, as you kind of uh, rank the good stuff, I mean, he's talking about the financial sector uh, opening up to foreign investment, talking about foreign intellectual property rights, which we know is a big sticking point with the Trump administration, uh, trying to reduce the trade surplus and also uh, reducing duties on imported autos, out of all of those, uh, which one's the most important, do you think? You know, the problem here is, um, the problem here is that nobody really understand or uh, know uh, Trump's objective. I mean, he, he, he was talking about, he has been talking about to reduce uh, the United States trade deficit with China by about $100 billion. But at the same time, he was complaining about all this stuff that you just mentioned, like intellectual property right, market access. You know, think about it. None of the stuff that he complained about will have anything to do with reducing the trade deficit, except tariff. Tariff, I mean, the, the average tariff rate in China is about 4.4%. So you can, you can reduce that a little bit more, but it won't make a huge difference. Of course, the auto sector, um, it will make some difference. I mean, the, the Chinese tariff is still 25%. You can drop that to about 2 and 3% to the same level, uh, level as the United States. But th would that make a huge difference in terms of uh, correcting the uh, trade imbalance? No, not at all. I don't think it make, uh, make, a no, make no difference whatsoever in terms of addressing that trade imbalance issue. So he really does not know what he was talking about because, as I said many times, uh, the U.S. trade imbalance is a reflection of a very low savings rate, inadequate domestic savings rate. If you have a very low domestic savings rate, whenever your economy starts to grow, you have to borrow from abroad. Whenever you start to borrow from abroad, you will have to run trade deficit. This is a very basic economic. I don't think he understands. And I'm surprised even his economic advisor, like Navarro, uh, does not tell him about it. Maybe he does not tell him intentionally because it, it, from, from, from the sound of it, He's talking about a bunch of stuff that is based on some bogus theory. But anyway, I don't, I stop ranting here. But <laughs> the point here is, the point is, uh, he does not know what he wants. President Xi has announced a bunch of things, uh, trying to please him. My guess is he can take the offer and declare a victory to his political base because he cannot forget about his political base for even a second. So he can declare victory and walk, home, walk, walk away from it. And at the same time, the President Xi could also say, well, I planned this. Uh, this all of this stuff have been planned. Now uh, uh, we have delivered. And you see Trump's, um, high, uh, Trump, Trump's high pressure tactics never really worked. But we're going to do it anyway. So she can also declare victory. So this whole trade war stuff is not credible to begin with. And if it's not credible, it's not going to happen. Well, uh, and, and I guess both sides, then it's a win-win situation. But, but at the Boal uh, Forum, though, there were a lot of voices emerging, not just uh, the voices of, the, of uh, President Xi and some other leaders within the Chinese government. Um, but we were hearing from people from other countries uh, a lot of concern about the ripple effect of this, that, that if there is a trade dispute between the United States and China, which you say probably won't happen, but if there is, 
that it has a ripple effect. It, it could impact other countries. They could be caught up in all of this, and it could have an impact on the global economy. So you're in Canada. Totally. Give me a sense of what you're hearing there. Well, obviously, uh, this is like a huge deal. We're talking about number one trader in the world with number two trader in the world. They are uh, blocking, uh, they, are, they are basically uh, uh, trying to have a war, trade war, uh, threaten each other. I mean, of course, this is like a huge deal because, you know, uh, the, the, the supply chain story everybody are talking about, this is for real. If you think about the Chinese economy as a whole, trade imbalance is not big. China's trade surplus is only 2% of GDP. If you look at the United States as a whole, the U.S. trade deficit, of current account deficit as a whole, is only about 2.5%. It's not big at all. It's very, very modest on both sides. But if you look at the bilateral, it's huge between China and the United States. That basically tells you there's something going on here. What, is that, what has been going on here is basically a whole bunch of countries export a whole, whole lot of stuff to China, and this stuff being reproduced, this stuff being processed, and then reshipped to the United States. So China basically has is running a huge deficit with a range of countries, yeah. and runs a huge surplus with the United States. So this is a supply chain uh, story. You know, like a typical story is iPhone. I mean, I you know, Apple makes ninety five percent of the money. By process, by uh, manufacturing iPhone in China, China makes about five to ten percent. But when the iPhone is shipped to the United States, it, it basically is billed as China exports. Right. And so and all I'm saying here is that's a total. There's a, there's a, you know, I think you have to talk to the reasonable people in order to figure out a uh, figure out a way to deal with the issue. Yeah. But if you talk to a bunch of unreasonable people, you cannot reason with unreasonable people. That's, that's what I'm talking about. And I think lots of tra trade, uh, lots of uh, economic advisors and aides to Trump, they are not reasonable. So if you're not reasonable, you cannot reason. Yeah, there's a them. lot of people saying it shouldn't say made in China, it should just say shipped from China. But Chen Zhao joining us uh, from Canada, thanks so much.